Welcome to lecture 15. One of the great achievements of quantum mechanics is its ability to describe the chemical bond. In this lecture, we will examine how solutions to the Schrodinger equation can describe chemical bonding. This lecture will be delivered in three parts. In the first part, we will define what it means for an operator to be Hermitian. We will use this property in the second part, where we will examine how H2 plus arranges its orbitals to make bonding and antibonding orbitals. Finally, in the third part, we will extrapolate from the molecular orbital solutions of H2 plus to build molecular orbital diagrams of diatomic molecules and see how we can use them to predict the strength of bonds between atoms. Recall that we required that all quantum mechanical operators correspond to a real observable. This means that the eigenvalues that are produced when its corresponding operator is applied to a wave function are real numbers. This will be true even if the operator A and psi are complex. To find out what this means, let's multiply on the left of equation 1, being the standard quantum mechanical eigenvalue eigenfunction relationship, by psi star and integrate over all space to get the integral of psi star times the A operator applied to psi dx is equal to a times the integral of psi star times psi dx. And if we assume that psi is normalized, then this integral on the right is equal to 1, just leaving a. Now, taking the complex conjugate of equation 1, we get the complex conjugate of the operator a times psi star being equal to a star times psi star. Since a must be real, its complex conjugate is the same as the original number. So we can write the right-hand side as a times psi star. If we take this equation and multiply on the right by psi and integrate, we get the integral of psi times the complex conjugate of the a operator applied to psi star dx being equal to a times the integral of psi times psi star dx. If we assume that psi is normalized, then this integral on the right is equal to 1, just leaving a. So the result of these two processes are the same. We're now going to do a quick example where we're going to demonstrate how to show an operator's Hermitian. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this on the momentum operator, which I have written right here. This p hat of x is equal to negative i h bar d by dx. And we're just going to do this in a one-dimensional example like I said, just as a quick test case to show how one would demonstrate how an operator is Hermitian. And so in one dimension, what we're essentially showing is this is the integral over all space, so it's an integral between minus infinity and infinity, and I'm just going to write in some trial function, in this case f, and so what I have is the integral over all space of f star, and what is that? I am going to sandwich the momentum operator in between with f integrated with respect to x, and that's going to be equal to the integral over all space. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to reverse the order of the operator, or of the, the trial function, f. And that the wave function that I'm going to be using here, not the wave function, but the operator, is just p hat x. And on this side, I have to apply it as the complex conjugate, because by definition, that's what it needs to be. And that's being applied to the complex conjugate of my wave function, in this case denoted by f. And the one assumption that we're going to make in this is that we're going to assume that f is normalizable. Which is a reasonable assumption because we typically want to have our wave functions to be normalizable. And so what this means is that as we take f out to, um, out to positive and negative infinity, then f should go to zero. And again, this is as x goes to plus or minus infinity. So then our next step is to simply show that left-hand side equals right-hand side. So if we look at the left-hand side first, then what we end up taking is this piece, this integral over all space, so between minus infinity and infinity, of our trial wave function, the complex conjugate, f star. We have our momentum operator, p of x. We have um, our trial wave function, f dx. And so if we substitute in the operator, we have the integral between minus infinity and infinity, f star, negative i h bar d by dx, and that's applied to f 
times dx. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to then pull out the negative ih bar up front since they are constants and they aren't affected by the integral. So negative ih bar, integral between minus infinity and infinity, and that is of f star. I'm going to apply this differential to f so I get df by dx. And then that's applied to, or that'll be integrated over um, with respect to x. Now for me to be able to show left-hand side equals right-hand side, what I'm going to need to use is integration by parts to semi-evaluate this integral that I have to have down here. And so I have the basic framework for integration by parts up in the top right-hand corner, and it's the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So if I assign in my expression here my df by dx, and I call that dv, and I assign my f star to be equal to u, then what that means is that I can write the next step of this to be negative ih bar, and I'm going to have u times v, which means I'm going to have f star times f, because the antiderivative of df by dx is just f. And from that, I'm going to subtract off the integral between minus infinity and infinity of v du, which means I'm going to have v, which is f, and then du is df star by dx and that's applied with respect to dx. And then of course, the first part of this, the uv, this is evaluated between minus infinity and infinity. So what happens next is that I apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, or I can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to this first term. We already said that f is normalizable, which means that as x goes out to positive and negative infinity, f is gonna be equal to zero. And so since I'm evaluating f at positive and negative infinity, then I end up with this term 0 minus 0, which means that this term then cancels out. I end up with 0. And so then what I can do then is I can multiply this negative i h bar with the second term. And what that yields is i h bar, the integral between minus infinity and infinity. And that's evaluated of f times df star by dx and then the integrals is evaluated with respect to x. So this is where I'm going to leave the left-hand side. So now I'm going to start tackling what goes on on the right-hand side. And so here I'm just going to rewrite this integral down here. So for the right-hand side, I have this integral between negative infinity and infinity, f px hat star, meaning I'm using the complex conjugate of the momentum operator. I have the complex conjugate of my trial wave function, times dx. And so in this case, I'm now just going to plug in the complex conjugate of the momentum operator, so the integral of negative infinity to infinity, my trial wave function f. The complex conjugate, I basically flip the sign of all terms that have i in it. So I end up positive i h bar d by dx, and that's going to be applied to the complex conjugate of the trial wave function times dx. I can pull out the i h bar out front because they're constants. I have the integral from minus infinity to infinity, f df star by dx times dx. And what you can see is that I have a term here for my left-hand side, and I have my term here for my right-hand side, and we can actually see that these two terms are the same. And so what that tells us is that the momentum operator has to be Hermitian. And that's because we've been able to show that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. The major takeaway from this, though, that I want you to take away anyways, is that by saying that this operator or any operator that we're going to employ, that it's Hermitian, is what it does is it just applies or allows a little bit more flexibility when we're going to be trying to solve complex integrals that involve terms that have operators associated with them. And so it's with this flexibility that if we were to say to start with something that looks like this left-hand side term, if it's easier to instead evaluate the term that's over here on the right-hand side, then we're able to make this direct relationship between the two because the operator is Hermitian. Or we might be able to be able to group together terms later on. And this is how we're going to use this a little bit later in the lecture is that we're going to be able to group together terms because we can show that because the operator is Hermitian, then they're exactly the same integral. With this new information, 
let us rewrite one of the postulates from earlier in the course, being to every observable in classical mechanics there corresponds a linear Hermitian operator in quantum mechanics, where a Hermitian operator satisfies the requirement where the integral of psi star times the a operator applied to psi dx is equal to the integral of psi times the complex conjugate of the a operator applied to psi star dx. Essentially what this is saying is that if the operator is Hermitian, then it doesn't matter if it's applied to a wave function or having the complex conjugate of the operator applied to the complex conjugate of the other wave function. We are going to invoke the Hermitian property of the Hamiltonian so that we can equate integrals with terms where the Hamiltonian is operating on psi n or psi star m, where n and m are not going to represent the same atomic orbital.